Well, hello, folks. The old fisherman back with you. We in the kitchen again. Guess what? We're going to make us a catfish stew. We're going to have potatoes, onions, uh, bacon, and there's about three or four pounds of uh, catfish fillets, carnation milk, and uh, salt and pepper with a little, a little bit of Worcestershire and Texas Peak in it. <clears throat> Let's make us a catfish stew, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Chunks of beautiful catfish. And I put uh, about a third of a pot of water just to boil them off in. And we're going to cook it down, cook the catfish down in boiling water right off the bat. Beautiful fillets. All right. Hey, we'll get right back with you. We got the fish cooking, the bacon cooking. One thing I want to add, we're going to have some uh, milk. And uh, I like the Mazzola milk. If you folks that don't drink a lot of milk, want your milk to last longer, buy it in the cartons. It costs a little bit more, but you don't have to throw it out. I don't drink a lot of milk, and it, it'll last three or four weeks in that carton. The expiration date, always read it, is always later than it is in the plastic containers. But uh, we're going to have Worcestershire, we're going to have uh, as the onions already cut, uh, getting ready to be cut up, and all our ingredients, carnation milk and butter is what we're going to What we're going to do is we're going to chop up the onions and uh, potatoes in squares, the potatoes in squares, and chop up the onions small and uh, cook it in that bacon grease over here. And... Uh, like stir fry it in the bacon grease and then put them into the fish when they get through cooking. Hey, it's going to be good, I'm telling you. All right, folks, we're going to chop up our onions. Now, I like to use three or four onions with three uh, about the same amount of onions is per pound of fish I don't you know that's just something I do so I think we got three or so pounds of fish I'm guessing I didn't weigh them but uh, hey you can add more onions add whatever onions you want if you like onions but it gives it help give it the flavor I'm gonna chop them up put them in the pan here what we're going to try to do. I always like to go across the onion. I'm going to tell you, you need a good cutting board to do this. Makes it a lot easier. You're basically just cutting up onions. That's all we're doing here. And we're going to cut the potatoes in squares. I like adding a little, a little Worcestershire and a good bit of Texas peat. Give it a little heat. <clears throat> To my stew. Sometimes, you know, if you if you put a lot a lot of meat in it, you got to add a lot more vegetables, uh, like onions and potatoes, and milk, or to get kind of thick and it ain't quite as good. But if you ever get it too thick, you can just take out some, add milk to it, and loosen it up, and. Uh, and spice it back up with a little bit of more Texas peat or what have you and, and it'll work real well if you ever get it too thick, too meaty. Just a little tip. 
you can make your several stews from one if you do it that way. I have done that before. Freeze it like that and then add to it when I bring it out to loosen it up. And, uh, and it works real well. It goes a long ways like that. We have uh, been having a really good time uh, perch fishing. Hadn't done a lot of crappy fishing. Got too many people in the way. Everywhere I wanted to go, somebody sitting. So I had to basically quit trying to catch crappy because uh, I couldn't find none of my holes and my, all my holes were taken. So we went perch fishing and we had a really good time doing that. I don't like to do videos around people and there's a lot of people out there and I want to go fishing. I, I, you know, I won't do it. I got to go somewhere else by myself to do a video. That's just the way I am. I don't like to do videos in front of people um, and, and talking loud on the lake. I try to get away from people. So if y'all see me leave when you come up, there's a reason for that. Uh, basically, if I'm doing a video, y'all have messed me up if you come up on the old fishman. I mean, I'm not being rude to leave. I just I just don't want to be videoing while I got a bunch of people that right on top of me. I mean, I have in the past, but I don't like it. So, anyhow, we got our onions done. I'll put a slice of butter in that pan with the bacon grease. We're just going to cook these onions off in the bacon grease. And when they get uh, semi-done, we're going to throw it in that... Uh, when the fish get done, we're going to throw these onions cooked already with the bacon grease on it in the fish. What we're going to do. That's quite a bit of onions. It might be a little bit too many, but anyhow. I got one more to cut up, so I, I know it's going to be a lot of onions. Get right back with you. Alright, folks. We got our potatoes chopped up in cubes. We got our bacon cooked. And we're cooking the onions. And we got butter. We added the butter in these onions. All that will go into the stew. And the, and the stew is cooking down. Stir these up. And we're going to do the potatoes the same way. We're going to put a little bacon flavor in them. Hey, it's going to be good, I tell you. Alright, hey, we're getting closer. We're going to put some uh, Worcestershire. The meat's already about cooked down. I'm going to pour... I don't know, about two tablespoons of Worcestershire in there. And we're going to add about a quarter of a, bar, a bottle of Texas Peak in that meat is what we're going to do. And uh, hey, we're going to stir it around. We want that meat to be all crumbled up. I don't want no big chunks. So we're going to let that cook together right there. A little bit more cooking in that Texas peat. The onions are, are, I'm fixing to add the onions to it also. We're going to pour the, we're going to dip the onions out and put it in there with that concoction. Got to do it a better way than this though. But I want to save some of my bacon grease. Hey, can't wait to eat this baby. Bacon flavored onions added to this fish. You can see I got a pretty good pot. So what I do when I cook catfish too is I, I'll uh, after it cools next day I'll put some in quart freezer bags and when I want a catfish or you can go over the gallon if you got several people eating. I only it's only me here so I'll fix it up with quart freezer bags full and uh, hey have a good meal later when I don't want to have to go through cooking. You understand what I'm where I'm coming from? I'm gonna leave a little bit of onion in there for my potatoes. And what I'm going to do at this point, we didn't use most of the butter, but I'm going to put uh, the rest of the butter 
in there to cook down the potatoes a little bit. Not much. But I don't want the potatoes to be overcooked. That's why I don't put them in there early. Uh, in the stew. But hey, we'll get right back with you. Alright folks, time to put the bacon in. I'm going to break the bacon up in pieces and put it in the stew. This is what's going to make it really good. Crumble it up, if it'll crumble, and let it cook in there. And it's always a good idea to eat the last piece for your efforts. Now, we're going to take the potato. Put them in this skillet. Cook them a little bit. Kind of a stir fry in this skillet. I got the, the heat on about medium. You're going to cut the stew down because you don't want it to stick. Boiling pretty heavy. You stir it up ever so often, you don't want it to stick. You see down in there, that meat's cooked up pretty. Got that red tint to it with that uh, Texas Pete. Can't beat Texas Pete. Not too much, if you like it hot, you can add a lot more than I did. That's going to give it a Texas peat flavor with a little Worcestershire boot. Fry them off a little bit, and then I'm going to dump them in there, and when they get soft and ready to eat, we're going to eat this stuff. We're going to add the milk to it first, though. So I'll show you that in a minute. About time to put the carnation milk in. Shake it up really good. I'm gonna put two cans of carnation milk and a little bit of the uh, Lazola milk with it. And if I want it sweeter, I can add some more carnation milk. You can also use half and half if you want to have it really sweet. So you get it as sweet as you want it. That's the way to do it. Stirring these potatoes, I don't want them to start to burn. I'm basically letting them cook long enough to get some of that, all that butter in them. Then we're gonna put it in there, in the stew. These potatoes are, are I use the butter to absorb in the potatoes and also for the cooking purpose. You can see the potatoes being stirred up. You don't want to overcook them. You want them just perfectly done when you get ready to eat. You don't want them hard. So basically, like I said, I'm just soaking up the butter with this and, and, and halfway cooking them, and then we're going to boil the rest of them in there in the milk and the solution to get the flavor in there. Looking good, right? This is ready. I 
think what I'm going to do at this point, it looks like it absorbed all the uh, butter up. We're going to finish cooking the potatoes in that solution. It won't take a couple minutes. You can test one after a while and make sure it ain't overcooked. You don't want to overcook these potatoes. But you don't want them hard either. So you want them just right. If somebody do your dishes for you, you'd be in good shape. We got us a pot full of uh, meat and potatoes. Now we got to add the milk to it. I'm going to start with two cans. Could end up with three. Stir it around. Looking good, looking good. Shouldn't have to put any pepper, but if you want pepper, you can. That Texas Peak should take care of any pepper that, you, that would be needed. It's going to be a pretty thick, almost like a chowder. Sometimes I get carried away and make it too thick. We're going to add a little bit of uh, Mazzola milk in it. Um, every time I cook, I got a mess. But that's what cooking's about, making a mess, let me tell you. I got one piece of bacon that fell in that hole. <laughs> I didn't mean for that to happen, but it did. Once it hit the, water, hit the juice, there wasn't no getting it to get back. So. So well, anyhow, we're going to let that cook till the potatoes are done. Hey, I hope you're going to enjoy when you try this method of cooking. The old fisherman catfish do. And you can use less in the ingredients, less potatoes, less meat. I always overdo it on the meat. Always. I, I'm bad about that. But in this case, I mean, it looks like I could be overdone it on the meat. But if you like it meaty, it ought to be perfect. And like I said, if it's too meaty, you can just keep adding liquid to get it to the consistency that you want. We're going to let it cook, and then we're going to try it out. Get right back with you. Folks, one thing I want to remind you of when you make this stew is you make sure you keep uh, stirring it up. Don't let it stick on the bottom. That'll mess your whole stew up. Stir it constantly when it's about done. It really looks good, don't it? Oh my goodness. Hey, can't wait to try it. Matter of fact, we're gonna try a little a dip right now. Right out the barrel. Look at that. We'll blow it. Oh my goodness. That is perfect. Perfect stew. The Old Fisherman way. God bless each and every one of you. Thanks for watching the Old Fisherman Love and Life videos. We'll see you next trip. All right, folks. Here it is. The Old Fisherman Catfish Stew. Chowder, whatever you want to call it. It's thick. Probably too much meat, but it will be good. Hey, let's see. Again, let's, let's take a good bite of it. Totally delicious. Thanks for watching.